p.m. on March 4th, 2024. I'm calling today's meeting of the Board of Public Works to order. First item on the agenda, public appearances for non-agenda items. And I see no one in the house. Scott, no one registered. Okay, moving on. Approval of the minutes from the February 19th, 2024 meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? I so move to approve February 19th, 2024 meetings, please. I'll second that motion. Okay. Do we have any discussion? All right. Seeing none, I will call the vote here. All in favor of the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Sounds like it's unanimous. Moving on. Uh, review of utility P card and check purchases. Do I have a motion? Uh, we, we don't need... Oh, I'm uh, sorry. No, this is a discussion item. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Thank yeah. you, Dave. No problem. No problem. Um, okay. Any discussion on the, the P-card and check purchases? All right. Hearing none. I don't have any. I don't either. We'll move on to the report from the department. We have Director Tim Volker here with us today. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a couple of project updates I have this evening. Uh, the 2024 street resurfacing project, uh, we're set to open bids on uh, March 8th. And then uh, last week, Monday, we had a, a pub public involvement meeting for that project uh, that was held here in the council chambers. Uh, 11 members of the uh, public came out to attend that meeting. And then Public Works also gave a presentation on Wednesday evening of last week uh, regarding the street resurfacing citywide uh, project. Uh, we gave that to the Committee of the Whole on Wednesday of, of last week. And then later this month, we'll be advertising our street maintenance project, uh, the street maintenance projects, the crack filling and chip seal project. And then also this later this month, we'll be advertising the 2024 sidewalk replacement project. And then last week for the Fitchrona Road, Goose Lake stormwater project, uh, we had a, a scoping meeting was held last week with the uh, design consultant, uh, Rukert Milky and AECOM team. Uh, they're going to revise the scope based on that, that meeting, and then after that, uh, once we get the scope, uh, we'll look to award the contract for design of that project. And then lastly, phase one for the Syene Road reconstruction project, the uh, traffic signals at Syene and Lacey still remain flashing. Uh, I reached out to our design consultant today. Uh, they were still working on the timings for that traffic signal. Uh, they're hoping to have that wrapped up either this week or next week. And then uh, the, the railroad still has some work to do on their traffic signal. So we're hoping to have that, those signals up and in operation sometime later this month. With that, does anyone have any questions? Dave. Uh, Tim, are we uh, making pretty good progress on our street sweeping, you know, given the lack of snow this winter where, you know, we wouldn't have had to use as much snow and s salt and sand. Uh, are we, are we making pretty good progress? Would, you know, we've had pretty good weather. Yes, we, we have been just with the weather being nice, able to, to street sweep uh, a lot more than, than normal. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. And one more question. This is this is unrelated, but uh, it was raised, Tim, uh, at at council that uh, about leave pickup, and one of the alders suggested that we get our own vacuum truck. And uh, um, I'm I, I would I prefer to stay what we with what we have rather than getting another large piece of apparatus. And I feel when it leaves, they're just put to the curb, and they end up in the uh, they end up in the street more than if we have to bag them. But uh, were you, did they did the uh, anyone talk to you about that? I just want to make sure you're not getting surprised. I'm not I'm not in favor of that. I'd rather have someone else than 
put that on the city, but I, I just wonder if you, if anyone had talked to you about that issue. No, no one reached out to me after the, the council meeting. I did have a conversation with Ben Schulte, our environmental engineer. Uh, it was probably several weeks ago. Uh, I believe he gave a presentation, or he did an anal evaluation on the cost feasibility uh, versus having Pelletary do it versus us in-house several weeks ago at the RCC. Um, but it, you know, based on my conversation with him, it, you know, the capital cost of the truck and just having to hire someone new to, to do that, you know, for eight weeks, it, and what Pelletary charges, it really isn't cost feasible. Um, yeah. Is my I my just understanding? Want you surprised, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I You're just welcome. Didn't want you this can flown at you without uh, without a little warning. I appreciate it. Yeah, I remember li I listened to that RCC meeting and, and I was kind of astounded that somebody would build a truck knowing that it has, you know, utility two months out of the year at most. Like, why isn't this thing a combination yeah. street sweeper? Yeah, it would be eight, like eight weeks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously the person we would hire, we would definitely be able to utilize them, you know, snow plowing during the winter and summer on, on streets, but... Um, you know, then eight weeks, they're solely dedicated to leaf pickup and, you know, older gestures, just like you mentioned, the truck, which is, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars is is sitting for, you know, 10, 10 months out of the year. But I do know a lot of the adjacent communities do do it themselves. So there is something to, to that, um, you know, and that's what Ben did look into. But, you know, when he put the numbers down on the paper and what Pelletary charges us, it's considerably less. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they missed a few pickups, you know, and, and, you know, we had to have our crews come along and, and clean up a couple of those, those trucks have notoriously high maintenance costs too, you know, about the time you're, you're vacuuming. And then instead of leaves being there, someone left part of a rake or something, you know, it's, it's right. They're always, they're always broke down. All right. That's all I wanted to say. About and that. I do, you. you know, one issue that they do have is if, you know, branches get in into the sucker of the truck, you can have issues and that can cause complications. Um, you know, and then the question is if the city buys one truck and it breaks down during that eight weeks, <laughs> you're kind of at SOL. So you kind of almost need two trucks as a, a backup or redundancy so you know that capital cost could even be a little bit more just having a, a second backup truck too thank you i appreciate your evaluation you're welcome any other questions for tim okay we'll dive into our agenda proper here I will entertain a motion to approve resolution R 3524, the 2024 purchase of chemicals. I'll move approval of resolution R 3524, purchase of chemicals. I'll second that motion. Okay. Tim, you want to lead us through this? Yes, so resolution R-35-24 is for the 2024 purchase of chemicals. Uh, this is for the chlorine and fluoride for our water, potable water wells within the city. Uh, chlorine is added to the city's water system to ensure safe drinking water. And fluoride is added to uh, prevent tooth decay. Uh, so we're looking to have council authorize the purchase of chemicals uh, from Hawkins Chemical Incorporated and authorize an amount not to exceed $56,000 uh, for the purpose of water treatment. Any questions? Yeah, Dave. <clears throat> um, have, we, have we seen the same inflation you know, for chemicals, chemicals as we have uh, for everything else since 2020? You know, I know you've only, you haven't been here that long, but I, I'm guessing we've been seen a steady increase maybe not uh, the last increase for chlorine and fluoride was uh, this past summer 2023 um, we reached out to the Venner Hawkins and they don't foresee any increases in the near future it just because it, it has stabilized 
And then we also treat our water with phosphate, but that's purchased through a separate company, Martell, and um, their last increase was December 2020. And they, they've also seen a, a stabilization and don't see any potential future increases in the near future either. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Yeah, Don. Uh, just a question, Tim. Uh, a lot of uh, municipalities around us all, you know, fluoride and chlorinate. Do, can we buy in bulk and save some money or? I'm not aware of any co piggyback contracts out there for, for chemicals. Um, I, I do know the city has been utilizing Hawkins for, for several years now, um, but that, that is something we can look into. I, I can check more on the, the history of the city and the, the procurement of that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. We, we probably, you know, with uh, chemicals like that, we don't want, like in our, they're all stored at the, stored at the wells, am I correct, Tim? We, we probably don't want excess Excess storage, you know, it is chlorine, chlorine gas. Uh, yeah, we, we do store them in, in tanks, the, the liquid, so they're delivered by the, the chemical trucks directly to the well, and then it's transferred from the truck to the, our tanks on site. Dave and Kim, you guys have been around for a while. Do we see this uh, every year? Yeah, okay. And yeah, long as, I, long as I've been on the board, yeah. And how does this 56,000 compare to previous years? Do we remember? I have to go back I, and I look. I think it probably. seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our volume, probably our pumping volume might have gone up. I'm not sure, but uh, seems like a, I, I would tell you, it seems like a very modest cost to have a safe water supply. Yeah. Um, and Tim, this this is for 2024. So, so the the new tower will have no that that's that's not going to come online uh, at any point during the year in effect. Correct. Like this, right. So once that does come online, you you'll probably see an uptick in the the treatment cost uh, just to treat that additional water. Anything further? Okay, I'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R3524, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on, uh, looking for a motion to approve R3024, approving purchase of 2024 radios and water meters. I'll move approval of resolution R3024. Approving purchase 2024 radios and water meters. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Don. Okay. Tim, tell us a little more about this. The city, through a quality based selection process, selected a census advanced metering infrastructure system for water meter reading back in. 2011, uh, the AMI system includes a fixed network system, meter data management system, and census radios and iPearl meters. Each year, the utility budgets for census radios and iPearl meters for new construction and for replacements. Uh, there are funds in the budget for this project. Uh, we're looking for council to authorize $56,655 of water utility funds for the purchase of water meters and radios from Core and Maine. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, how many how many meters is that, and and what is the uh, lifetime we expect? I, I would just add that you know prior to 2011, um, you know, we had to have water department employees go around and and read read the meters um, at all the locations, or if someone was moving or, or transferring, you know, we had to have a read in and read out, which now can all be done uh, electronically. 
Yeah, so the, the $56,655 uh, purchases 232 three-quarter inch iPro meters. Uh, so that's about $165 each for the meter. And then we're also purchasing 105 radio reads uh, to just do what you mentioned so a, a meter person doesn't have to go out and, and read it. The radio allows us to, to do that uh, through the network. And that those are $175 a piece. And the life expectancy of, of both the, the radio and the meter is, is 20 years so that the city put this back um, infrastructure in back in 2012. So we're looking at 2032 to, you know, for that 20 year life expectancy. But obviously, you know, purchasing as many meters as we do, they're not all going to last 20 years. So there are some that, you know, due to freezing or something we have to go out, replace, or maybe they, they weren't um, functioning a after installation properly that we have to go out just install them. But mo most of these are for newer construction that we are utilizing them for, not, not replacement. Yeah, Dave. Jim, uh, see if we get, see if we get uh, 300 new units built in, you know, in Fitchburg in a year. Where do the, where do the meters for the new, new buildings and apartments come? Uh, are they coming out of this this budget, or are we able to charge them to the project? Can you can, can give a little background on that? So that the, these three quarter inch is what we're purchasing uh, with with this resolution, and those are for residential meters. So our you know single family homes in an apartment complex would if, if they're not individually metered, um, you would have a larger master meter. And that, that would be our, our badger is what we typically utilize for our larger meters. But we, we still utilize these uh, census radios um, for the badger meters. They're, they're compatible. So we, we have two types of meters within the city. Uh, residential, smaller is our iPearl meters. And then our larger meters are badger. However, the entire city has the, the same radio, census radios. Then we, we only need the master plumber for installing the larger larger meters. Our utility workers can install the three-quarter inch. Is that correct? That is correct. So this seems like a, Tim, a, Tim. Small, uh, like a small number of meters given construction and you know uh, how many like how many um existing meters do we have throughout the city it's got to be north of ten thousand. i yeah that number I, I don't have um i i can look into it and check our billing system to see so are you specifically large meters small meters you well, know, I mean, you said two hundred, uh, two hundred and thirty-two meters, and I yeah. would, I would. Assume so this that is three, with, yeah, and we have different size meters. So this is a, a three-quarter inch meter, but we have one-inch meters, two-inch meters. Okay. Um, so d total, I I would have to check the the billing system and, and get that number. Okay, Don. Uh, yeah, just clarity. Um, did you say that the new installs for developments or new housing is paid for by the developer, or we're buying those? The, the, the city's purchasing these. The utility, so the enterprise. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor of R3024, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. 
Um, okay, let's moving on here. Um, looking for a motion to approve R3724 for the purchase of two John Deere 1585 mowers. I'll move approval of R3724, the purchase of two John Deere 1585 mowers. I'll second it. Okay. Tim, take it away. The uh, 2024 Parks Equipment Replacement Account has funding for replacing uh, the 2016 John Deere 1585 mowers. Uh, the department currently has two of these mowers. Uh, there is $223,503 budgeted in 2024 for equipment replacement. Sloan Implement provided a quote for two John Deere 1585 mowers based off the source well contract in the amount of $95,798.50. So we're looking uh, for council to approve the purchase of the two John Deere 1585 mowers in the amount of $95,798.50. And then we're also asking council to approve the surplus of one 2008 John Deere 1445 and one 2016 John Deere 1585 and authorizes the Public Works Department to sell them at Wisconsin Surplus if no other city department has any uses for them. Um, well, I guess before we get to the questions from the board, does Scott Endel have anything he wants to add for this? I presume that's why he's on tonight. And he's also on for the, the last shelter. agenda item, the Tower well. Hill Park yeah. Shelter. Nothing to add unless you've got questions, of course. Okay. I saw Dave's hand and I saw Kim's hand. I don't know who went first here. Do we have a, we have a sense what the uh, what the value of the used mowers is? Uh, no, we we don't. You know, it kind of all depends on on the need. If if there's several, you know, if it goes to surplus and there's a need out there, obviously that drives up the the price. Okay. So we might want, you know, we have some local firms right in the, you know, like Barnes, right in our, our city, and if maybe we just want to reach out to them. We have a used, you know, would you uh, would you be interested in purchasing? That might be, I, I realize an auction, auction might or might not give you the best price. So I'll just throw that out to you. Kim. Um, so in our resolution, it said originally this money was not budgeted until 2025 instead of 2024, and they were going to buy a chipper. Can you explain why they're not buying the chipper and why they're moving the mowers up for two years or up a year? Yes, I, I can explain that. Uh, we have dealt with problems with these two mowers recently. So this, this past year, um, there was downtime of at least a, a month trying to get some of the parts uh, to replace them. So to go a mowing season uh, with a month of downtime is difficult. Uh, they're used really heavily. So the, the chipper was supposed to be replaced in, in 2024, and these two mowers were s supposed to be replaced in 2025. So the, the chipper is still functioning. Uh, we haven't had issues with that. So we, we can push that another year in order to move the, the two mowers up this year and, and get the functioning mowers before the mowing season starts here coming up is shortly. Is the cost of the two mowers similar to the cost of a chipper? No, they're not. The The mowers is a lot more than the, the chipper, um, but yeah, it's a replacement. <laughs> it's it's a replacement fund so that the city's always putting money away and we have it scheduled out where it's getting replaced in certain years that the vehicles so every year we you know 2024 we have two hundred and twenty three thousand five hundred three dollars available we're not going to utilize all that this year so that money would then carry over next year to be added to the the balance um, and budget for next year. Okay, I get it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Don. Uh, 
and you might have said it then, but what, what's our average life on these mowers? So the, these are 2016 that we're replacing. So we, we got eight years out of them. And then we're going to keep one of the, the 2016 as a spare. And then right now we have a 2008 that's a spare. So that that's, is 16 years old. And then, you know, they're not only used for mowing, but in winter, uh, we, d we do have a snowblower attachment that it it's utilized around City Hall here for the, the parking lot and, and campus. And then also a, a blower on it, too, that the attachments for the 2016 can still be utilized for the attachments on the, the new two new ones here that we're purchasing. Dave. And these these are these are drivable. They don't have to be put on a trailer to get to the to those mowing location. Or am I wrong? Uh, they are drivable, but they they do I believe trailer them just due to the distance and where we're mowing. Okay. Just it, it's a lot faster. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Done. Uh, you mentioned some of the attachments. We could put sweepers on there, and is there a PTO that we can hook up a chipper to it if need be? Currently, we have a, a, a broom and a, a snowblower that we utilize it for. I, I'm not quite sure about the chipping attachment. I would assume since we're purchasing a separate chipper, either one, it's not available, or two, it is available. However, it's not for our type of use, hence why we're, we're purchasing a, a separate chipper. So it's got a broom. What what happens to the debris that it sweeps? Is that collected or is that just pushed off to the side? I would assume just pushed off to the side. And then we have our, our street sweeper to, to sweep it up. Okay. If if required. And you uh, kind of hinted at it, but didn't actually say what is our, you know, for the purposes of replacement funds, what is the expected lifetime of these mowers? You know, I, we got eight years out of them, so I would I'd suspect that. Um, okay. Like I mentioned, the, the 2008 is still going. However, it's, it's a spare, so it, it's sitting a lot more than it, it's getting used. But you know, it is used heavily every day in the summer mowing, and then winter, when there's a, a snowfall event, it, it's used to to plow snow. So it's not sitting around a lot. These these are heavily utilized equipment. So you know, at eight years, I I think is is pretty good for something that gets used used like that. Anything else? Okay, we'll call the vote here. All in favor of Resolution R 3724, approving the purchase of two John Deere 1585 mowers. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. All right. Um, who wants to move approval of Resolution R 1124? Approving a contract with Cintas for uniform, towel, and mat services for public works maintenance facility and crews. I'll move approval of Resolution 1124, uh, approving contract with Cintas for uniform, towel, and mat services. I'll second the motion. Okay. Tim, give us the rundown on this one. So Public Works has been utilizing Cintas to provide clean shop towels, floor mats, and uniform services since 2012. The city is currently under a previously signed contract with Cintas until 2027. Cintas is now able to offer Omnia cooperative pricing, which requires a, a three-year contract that would replace our, our current contract. Uh, the Omnia, Omnia 
cooperative price structure is a three-year contract that saves the city approximately $200 per week for uniform services from what we're currently paying. Uh, we have sufficient funds in general funds for streets, parks, and utilities to cover the annual expense for uniforms. It, it's something we budget annually for. So we're looking for council to approve the three-year agreement with Cintas in the amount of $74,369.62. Kim. And this will void the other contract we have, which already goes till 2027, so basically it's three years anyway. Is that correct? Correct. It will void the contract we're currently under. Okay. So what happens to the to the money? I mean, do we do we get a refund to offset this seventy five thousand dollars for this contract? So the the city budget we budgeted, I believe, around thirty six thousand dollars for uniform services. Uh, so our first year will be about twenty four thousand. So we'll have twelve thousand dollars worth of savings in, in public works general. Um, potentially to utilize on something else public works related. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I well, mean it it is in the general fund so it could be authorized used anywhere um but we we have been talking internally about the savings on what we could potentially use it for so that it obvious if we need to authorize it somewhere else or allocate it in public works, we'd come forward with, with that for approval. Okay. So I suppose uh, that's probably the same as with the sale of the lawnmower, then that goes into the general fund as well. I believe so. Or I don't know if it goes back. That may go back into the replacement fund. I, I don't know. M Misty would have a better idea on that. But I guess... Uh, even though we're saving money over the next three years, we still need the 75000 approval. Correct. Okay. Dave, I saw your hand go up. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Tim, does uh, this contract, you know, say they, they have whatever uniform, you know, our, our employees wear, does it include placement, uh, replacement of those when they become worn out? Um, yes, it, it does. So the, the contract... As part of our uniform service, we do get a, a uniform advantage and a, a prep advantage. So that is, it, you know, if a pair of pants were to get ripped, it, it pays for the, the repair. Uh, the prep advantage is the, the preparation for the uniforms. So, yes, if it also it, if the size changes, you know, an employee, you know, loses weight or grow six inches in a year, um, we, <laughs> we would be able to, to get new pants uh, because we get that service through Cintas. And then also it is, if they don't like a, a shirt or something, we, we do offer se several options for them. And then depending on their, their specific job description, if they need a high-vis work shirt, um, something flame retardant, too, they can get that reflective shirts um, and different type of, of pants depending on the type of job and, and tasks that they, they do. Thank you. Don. Uh, quick question. Is Dentas local? They do have a, a local rep representative for us. I'm not quite sure where they're located out of or where our account manager is. I'm looking at this paperwork. Stone Road? Okay. I see their trucks driving all over town. Yeah, and they, I mean, they come yeah, weekly we for us. There's a Cintas uniform services over by between Buckeye Road and Flom Road over in the Monona area. Yeah, I'm not seeing the local address on any of the, the paperwork in the agenda item, just their corporate. 
Well, like I mentioned, we you know they they come weekly for us for the uniform service. Headquarters, that's what comes on your billies, is that it? Yeah, Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a national company. Any other questions for Tim? Yeah, Don. Yeah, just, uh, just uh, is there a, any local folks? I mean, he, we pay taxes locally to spend that on. Cincinnati people, if there's local folks that could supply the same thing. Well, they know that they do have a, a local office. Just let me here. Let me search online and, and get the address. Like I mentioned, that it is local people because they come weekly for us. They're not coming from Cincinnati to deliver the uniforms. It's all being handled locally. Uh, it's 2222 Vondren Road, Madison, Wisconsin. Is Cintas Madison. So that looks like just west of Lake Monona, north of the Beltline. East of Lake Monona. It's East, yes. Halfway, Sorry. It's halfway between Highway 51 and, and the interstate there. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? All right, I'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R1124, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carried. Okay. Moving on, uh, do I hear anyone moving for approval of R3324, amending the 2024 Capital Projects Fund budget for the city solar? I so move we approve resolution R-33-24. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second the motion. Okay. All right. Tim, tell us about this mess. <laughs> there are currently four solar inverters that are non-functional and require a replacement for the city's full rooftop solar uh, photovoltaic array to be maximally productive. Uh, so the city received a settlement from Huawei Technologies that was uh, deposited into the city's solar CIP project in 2023 to fund current and future non-functional inverters. Uh, the original purchase of the expanded solar array on various city buildings was partially funded by access increment from the uh, closure of TID number seven. So some of the uh, TID number seven closure funding for solar remains unspent in uh, CIP project number 1038 and can also be used to replace inverters. <clears throat> so this resolution we're looking for uh, council to amend the 2024 capital projects budget uh, to allow for the remaining 46,400 $41 of CIP number 1038 uh, to be spent on solar equipment replacement projects. And then we're also looking for council to direct staff to pursue the replacement of the non-functional solar inverters in accordance with the uh, city's purchasing policies. All right, I'll open it up for questions. Seeing none, I've got one. <laughs> okay, help me out here. So the, the new inverters are going to cost about 18000 Correct. And we're being asked to approve 46000 So this is going to cover, what, what is the 46000 going to cover? I believe the, the remaining amount needed for that $72,100. So there, there's 
four in inverters being replaced at $18,025, which is a total of $72,100. So there, there's already funding okay. in there, just not enough funding for the entire 72000 Okay, so the eighteen was for... For each one, not each, for each one, okay. correct. And I believe three are for the library, and the uh, fourth is the public works maintenance building. Um. So, has have we looked into the West Fire Station? Uh, the decrease in output in 2023 seems substantial there. I would have to ask Phil Groupie um, monitors that. So I, I can check with him t tomorrow and to provide a little bit more detail on that that decrease. Okay, I looked at the the output from. The panels on my own home, and it went you know, to 2021, 22, and 23 have all been pretty even. But it's it's a little more. 22, 22 was a little more than 21, and 23 was a little more than 22. So it's okay. So it's not like there was an extra cloudy year or snowy year or anything. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay. All in favor of resolution R thirty three twenty four, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. None. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution R nineteen twenty four. Approving the first amendment to the agreement for engineering services for Fitzrona Road reconstruction. I'll move approval resolution R1824, approving first amendment to the agreement for engineering services, Fitzrona Road reconstruction. Second. Okay. Tim? So Fitchrona Road from Tonto Trail to Nesbitt Road is being reconstructed to an urban section to replace deteriorating pavement and increase capacity and, and improve safety. Uh, so Resolution R2623 approved a contract with AECOM for engineering services for the reconstruction. The original contract was in the amount of $290,100 and um, since that original scope we had about six kind of significant changes um, to that scope and which covers this additional um, $188,110. So that the first change was uh, the original scope uh, assumed an always stop controlled intersection at Lacey Road and Fitchrona. So a, as part of the design, we also wanted AECOM to analyze a, a roundabout and a traffic signal uh, to evaluate those uh, two additional options. And it, it was determined that the roundabout uh, provided the best level of service. And also a roundabout is uh, consistent with that corridor. We just installed a new roundabout at Seminole and Lacey. And then there's also a um, roundabout further to the north on, on Fitch Rona that, that was installed several years ago. Uh, so a roundabout would be consistent with the infrastructure already there. And then once the roundabout was chosen, then there was the design for that roundabout, the associated lighting survey work, and uh, stormwater uh, for the roundabout. Uh, the second major change was the original scope of work for AECOM did not include the 450 feet on Lacey Road. So the Lacey Road project uh, that we just completed in November of 2023, that project ended 450 feet east of Fitch Rona Road. So that gap uh, was not included in AECOM's original scope. So 
to avoid having a gap of Lacey Road not complete, we wanted to include it in the Fitchrona Road project. So the third change was there was an additional retaining wall not included in the original scope of work for AECOM. Uh, this was by the Bavaria Sausage property. Uh, so with that retaining wall, there was also some storm wall sewer penetrations through that wall that we had to accommodate for. And then the, the fourth thing associated with this uh, amendment is the original scope of work assumed cast in place cantilever uh, retaining walls. And when we did the additional geotechnical work, for that, um, it came back that that type of retaining wall was inadvisable uh, due to the poor soils. We had to, um, they suggested a soil nail wall be utilized, and there was additional design and structural work uh, for the, the soil nail wall. And then lastly, the stormwater modeling that was completed um, early on. Uh, as part of AECOM's design, uh, the modeling showed uh, worse than expected water quality. Um, so due to that, we had some additional stormwater design that we needed to include on, on top of the original scope of work. So all of those amounted to $188,110. Um, we're still within the CIP budget for this project. And the total cost, the original contract was $290,100. The total cost for AECOM is $478,000. And that's still 8% um, of the overall construction cost, which is very reasonable for design services. And w with this resolution, lastly, our three budget amendments just to utilize, all, we're not adding money. We're still within the CIP budget. We're just utilizing $655 um, from our maintenance and arterial funds. And then utilizing $5,880 um, from professional services from utilities. And then lastly, $10,285 is um, being used from stormwater from the Lake Barney Watershed Project uh, for, to the stormwater um, on this project. So there's a, a lot to this resolution. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to further e explain some of these changes. Yeah, Dave. Um, there's, there's limited space, Lacey and Fitchrona Road. Um, can you put a roundabout that's big enough for, you know, the, the gravel trucks coming down there without having to buy substantial right-of-way? Uh, it's, it's kind of it's tight there. You can't go, you know, you can't, I'm not sure you can, I don't think you can go into the woods there. <laughs> and there's not much room on each side. I, I, Yes, yeah, so seems the, like it was a little too tight. Go ahead. So, so as I mentioned, the original scope was an always stop controlled intersection, uh, which wouldn't require any any land purchase. However, both the traffic signal and roundabout design do require land land purchase, and they're both similar. I, I believe the traffic signal may have been a tenth of an acre less. Um, so that there is going to be some right of way acquisition in order to to get that infrastructure in there um, and make sure that there's sufficient room, like you mentioned, for the the truck traffic and and vehicles going through that intersection. And will be some impact to the existing trees there. Uh, we we did have a renowned tree arborist come out and do an evaluation on the the age of those trees to make make sure that they're not um, believe it, yeah but exactly exactly. So we Ross did have that evaluation done and it did come back that it it wasn't was negative on the heritage trees. Yeah, Don. Um, and maybe it's just more uh, procedural, or what is the response for this group? 
because uh, it sounds like they're change orders and contract mods that were already approved and implemented. So we're not talking about those and saying, no, they're not approved. We're just trying to approve the money where it's coming from. Is that what we're doing here? Yeah, approving the, the additional funds for that so that the work, we, we've stopped the work. Um, AECOM's been put on hold till this gets approved. Dave. Um, Tim, I understand, you know, you're kind of the engineering, be more in the, um, you know, have that under control, but I, isn't this going to drive a substantially larger construction cost? Uh, you know, the roundabout itself is, a, you know, is a million dollars and the retaining wall. I'm just curious what, if you have a, a sense for what the uh, construction budget is going to be with the, with these changes. Yeah, right now with the roundabout and these retaining walls, we're about six million dollars for this project. I believe we got the city received a LRIP grant in the amount of one point eight million dollars, and then obviously we'll be sitting down with the town of uh, Verona to discuss a, a cost share uh, for for construction of that project. Tim, didn't we hear um, initially that this was going to be about six million dollars? Correct. It, it was up. I I don't know what the pre when they applied for the application, uh, what the cost estimate was there. But it, I mean, it was north of four, probably close to five in that ballpark. And then you know, the believe the application was submitted two two years ago, maybe. So there's increasing construction costs since then that we've accounted for. And then there's additional work. A lot of stormwater work with this project, too, upstream of, of Goose Lake. So like I had mentioned in my department head um, update uh, was the, the Goose Lake project to, to get that going just so when this roadway project's under construction, we also have the, the downstream Goose Lake improvements going on at the same time um, so we can move that water off off the road. Yeah, I guess I was just pleasantly surprised that, the, you know, the change from a stop sign, always stop to a roundabout plus the retaining wall didn't seem to have a significant impact on the overall budget. Right, and, you know, we're, we're there now if... The, the always stop. I, I don't know the exact year that that was going to fail, but you, you know the equipment's out there. Costs are cheaper now than it's going to be in in five or, or ten years. So for the city to to put in that roundabout now is very cost effective, especially with the the recent corridor improvements to the north and to the the east at Seminole and Lacey. I, I think it, it it it's a smart economical good move for the city to do it now. Dave. Well, Tim, just so I'm understanding this right, you know, it hasn't, the road hasn't flooded, you know, since you've been here. Uh, I'm, uh, it's flooded a lot since I've been in Fitchburg. So we're saying this project needs to be tied in with the increasing the outlet size on Goose Lake, you know, at that south end. Um, that is needed, otherwise we will, we'd still be prone to flooding uh, because we can't raise the road due to the underpasses. Am I correct that these two need to be be tied together? Absolutely, you you nailed it right on the head. The uh, downstream Goose Lake that outlets the the bottleneck. So if that doesn't get fixed, this brand new road will be flooding um, because that the outlet is improperly sized. There's a big there's some sort of big project going on. Right at the south end of Goose Lake, there's matting, and and you know what's going on there. I'm, I'm it's not pretty extensive. I, I was hoping maybe that was the, <laughs> the outlet getting increased. No, I'm I'm not aware of that. Ben probably has a, a better idea on what's going on. But like I mentioned in our update, we just sat down with the look with the consultant we're looking to award it with. Uh, so the, the scope they're revising slightly and then the looking to award the contract uh, probably sometime in April for the design to start. Um, it's probably gonna be close to a, 
a year with permitting and by the time it goes out to bid so the these two sh right now are kind of going side by simultaneously on the the same schedule for construction 2025 and having it wrapped up by the end of 2025 yeah. i said hate to hate to fix the road and then have another flood episode that damages it. Exactly. <laughs> so, so what is the new project that you are negotiating in is with AECOM and Rukert and Milky? Is that what you said? Yeah. Ru Rukert Milky is, is the lead on that project team and AECOM's a, a sub to them. So it, it's just the drainage improvements that, Alder Her Herps had mentioned for Goose Lake, the, the outlet for the lake is a bottle neck right now. So large rainfall events, that outlet can't let the water out fast enough for, for it when it rains. So then the lake backs up, which backs up the, the culvert between that and the road, right. and then the road floods. So is the new project only to do with the stormwater and drainage? There is no more road design, is that correct? Correct. It's everything downstream of the roadway. Tim, and I, I feel like the entire city is watching us right now, and they want to know, what is a soil nail retaining wall? <laughs> It's a, it's a retaining wall with the nail in the soil. Um, so it, it has to be, and I don't know the exact, in Florida we did a seawall like this and you basically anchor um, because the soil doesn't have enough structural strength that the, the cantilever isn't enough to support it so that you have to tie it back into the soil with an anchor and um, concrete and rebar and all that. Um, and I, I can pull up kind of a, a picture here, a graphic, and show you guys. But yeah, it's just because the soil doesn't have enough strength. But it, it basically gets tied back into the, the soil and let me just share my screen here. So if you see it, here's kind of a graphic. See how it ties back into the, the soil behind the wall? So those could be theoretically helical, helical anchors or something that goes in and then fans out. You know, you, you have various types of anchors. Uh, Correct. Those. Yep, all, and it's all, you know, you don't see it from the road. Here's kind of a, what you would see from the road. And then behind, and here's kind of an install of it. So you have a bunch of rebar, they, they spray it, shotcrete. Jim, are we, you know, uh, the, the hill, you know, I'm very familiar with that, and the hill is back a little bit from the side of the road. Are we, is the road being widened substantially there? I, I'm kind of surprised this is even uh, needed. This is on the same side as as Bavarian sausage, or is it on the other other side where there is a small retaining wall already? So the, there's four locations on where where the retaining walls would be, and the Bavarian sausage is right here is the first one. Yep. There's a, a second retaining wall, kind of by the the pond, just to the south of Bavaria sausage, and then the the third is underneath Highway 18 and 151. And then the, the fourth location would be the military, underneath the Military Ridge State Trail. So the, the bridge abutments aren't sufficient enough, so that they also have to be reinforced with that soil nail. 
doesn't surprise you know the that the soil is inadequate there doesn't surprise me a bit correct me either Any other questions for Tim on this? Okay, call the vote. All in favor of resolution R1924, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? All right, motion carries. All right, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution R3624, approving professional services for the Tower Hill Park Shelter Renovation Project. I'll move approval of resolution R3624, professional services for the Tower Hill Park Shelter Renovation. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Scott, I presume you're going to take this one. Yep, I can, I can, I can take it. Uh, this is uh, part of our our CIP uh, project uh, plan for large park shelters. Uh, and actually, what we did do is we did publicly notice uh, this uh, request for professional services. We did receive three uh, three proposals. Uh, uh, staff did review the proposals and. Recommending Angus Young for this work uh, at a not to exceed price of thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Uh, the funding is uh, at a level of uh, three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for the uh, for the project, and was funded with a, a recent uh, closure of one of our tips. Uh, the Tower Hill Park Shelter was actually constructed in. 1973, and, and I will report that it was uh, reserved 43 times this, this past summer for uh, for for uh, picnics and and family gatherings. So we're asking for your approval of this of this resolution. Questions for Scott? <clears throat> Scott. Uh are you going to have any type of meeting with the neighborhood to uh, have them look at the design? It seems like you know if, if they don't, we get we get screamed at no matter what we do. So or, or at the parks, uh, I would suggest they come before parks and, and people can come and comment. I I think that's a good idea, Dave. And, and really, it's a, a renovation project, so we're certainly going to try and you know keep the same brick facade and. You know, just basically update the bathrooms. We might be able to get a little bit more open air shelter space, but it's really going to be the same thing. But I think it's a good, a, a good public relations, if anything else. But it'll come before the park commission, and I'll, I'll see if I can't get the word out to everybody to let them know about it. Okay. Hope it hope it turns out as well as the uh, renovation at Macaw, Macaw uh, Park Shelter. That 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 was uh, that was a real winner. Well, and actually, Angus Young, they, they helped us with that project, so so they're familiar with what we did there, and we're, we're kind of looking for the same same kind of idea there, Dave. Perfect. And Scott, you said this is a renovation, so I was going to ask that. So that you're not going to demo this and start over from scratch. Okay. Going to be a renovation of the existing existing shelter, and is and, the and we may. Uh, I was just going to ask if the footprint is changing at all. I would think it, it may have to. Uh, Alder Jetser, just because of the uh, uh, um, ADA uh, concerns and issues, so I'm, I'm thinking we may have to expand it a bit just so that we can get enough room to put the. Put the renovated bathrooms in there, but again, too, I'd, I'd like to, if we could, try to get a little bit more uh, space in the open air uh, shelter here. You know, away from the but no, it's going to be basically in the same same spot, same you know, same brick brick siding, that kind of brick brick uh, on, on 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 the walls. That's for sure.
Yeah, Kim. Yeah, Kim has a question. Okay. And do you anticipate the construction being this year yet? We, we are hoping that it will begin. We, we are reserving the shelter through August. Uh, so we're hoping for a fall, a fall construction. Great. Or fall renovation, if you would. Okay. Well, that was going to be my concern. Have you taken that into account when you're taking reservations for the existing shelter? And it sounds like you have if you're taking them through August and then planning construction after that. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Scott, is the, uh, um, are there plans for putting solar on this or at least making sure that the roof is capable of, of handling solar PV? Well, well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate whether or not it's a, it's a good application for solar. Uh, we are going to, there is going to be an amendment in the contract that if, that it, if, we, de if we determine that solar is, an option there there's going to have to be some additional engineering and, and those kinds of things uh, considered but we certainly are going to take a look at it to see if, if a solar is a is a good option at the site there's no uh there's no kitchen facilities in there i mean what is there what is there in here that uses electricity uh, ju just lights okay just just the lights You know, and I guess that's got to be factored in the investment for the solar, if all of those types of types of questions. We actually been in in, in consultation with Phil here uh, to to determine whether this is going to be a, a potential project for for solar. And there's actually a dollars uh, in the ARPA TID closure plan uh, to consider. Uh, solar op opportunities in all, all, all park shelters. Uh, one of the things that we're potentially looking at is that the hub would be uh, potentially uh, an opportunity. Don. Uh, I assume that the design and the remodeling, it's still going to be a seasonal type facility, correct? It's not a year round type facility. That it's designed for, is it? Yep, just during the season, Don. Rental season. Yeah, because we winterize the bathrooms, close the bathrooms, that kind of thing. Very popular shelter for, for rentals, that's for sure. So I think people will appreciate the, uh, the update. Any other questions? I guess my question would be, is it feasible to go to the expense of putting the solar on it when it's only going to be used in the summertime? And I think that's what we'll, that's what we'll take a, under consideration, whether or not the investment, there's going to be payback on the investment. Uh, and preliminarily, it, it, it doesn't appear that it's going to, you know, give us, give us a, a, a benefit financially, but we'll... We'll take a look at it and, and, and then go from there. I, I think that at the end of the day, every new park shelter or facility that we're going to be building, we want to we want to take that into consideration. That's for sure. All right. Um, I will call the vote here. All in favor of Resolution R3624, Professional Services for the Tower Hill Park Shelter. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. Motion carried. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Scott. Right, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're done. All right. Moving on. I, I, I did have one. Oh, yeah, go ahead. One, one suggestion, Scott, before you go. Sure. On, on all our facilities, I, and I see a lot of the uh, parks around us have it, but when we're closing them for the season, if we could put a sign on there saying closed for the season, it might be beneficial to the users of it to know if the restrooms are going to be open or closed. Yeah, we, 
we actually do do that, Don. So that's a good that's a good idea. But we do we do post them that they're closed for the season. Oh, okay. I didn't. I don't know if I've seen it at the key. Well, that's a, a sign on there. Yeah, we're open already. We we open we. That's the one that uh, we keep open the longest in the winter, and then open it up the soonest because it is heated. So that's already open. Yeah. No, that's great. I just. When you close it for the season, I don't know if I've ever seen a sign on the door that says "closed for the season." Well, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll okay. It. Thank you, Don. All right, moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda is announcements. Our next board of public works meeting will be Monday, March eighteenth, same time, same place. Any other announcements? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move we adjourn. Second. Okay. We are adjourned at, oh, I'm sorry, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay. We are adjourned at 6.41 p.m. <laughs>